So I don't know if everybody has been keeping up with what's happening with the Diddy situation, but it appears that Sean Diddy Combs may be ready to talk. And you know who else has been doing some talking? Suge Knight. Suge Knight called from the jail, called into News Nation, and he's trying to let everybody know that Diddy is just a drop in the bucket and that we should be looking at people who are higher up. In short, Suge Knight named names. But Sean is ready to talk. We'll talk about this and we'll get into that video clip. Sean Diddy Combs wants to testify at his trial. His lawyer says, I don't know that I can keep him off the stand. So it sounds like his lawyer does not want him to talk, uh, but he does. It says here, I don't know that I can keep him off the stand. He is very eager to tell his story. And he said that to TMZ. He goes on to say uh, here, when contacted by CNN, a representative for Combs declined to elaborate on his lawyer's comments or say whether Combs will, in fact, take the stand. Uh, a source with the knowledge of the current case tells CNN that the discovery phase has not begun, so it is too early to confirm any witnesses or individuals who could be called to the stand during the upcoming trial. But it appears that he has echoed this sentiment uh, to his attorney that he is willing to talk. Now, this comes out uh, during the same time that Suge Knight uh, has made some pretty interesting allegations here. Suge Knight is saying we should not just look at uh, Diddy and that Diddy is doing what was done to him, doesn't make it right. But there are people that are larger up on that totem pole that people should be paying attention to. And he also mentions Jennifer Lopez. Of all the people, now we know we've covered the story before, uh, back in the late 90s, where uh, J-Lo was at the club with Diddy, and there was a shooting. They referred to it as that J-Lo could have been his gun mule, allegedly, but not certain for sure. But as you know, Diddy did not go to jail uh, for that incident. Instead, Shine did. So now J-Lo was back up in the mix here. Could it be true that J-Lo has video or there's video of JLo that the feds were able to see. And that is part of the reason why Ben Affleck has ended marriage with her for a second time. Suge is spilling the tea. Let's bring in this clip here. I get what you're saying about TMZ, but that's not really my interest, as you might imagine. My interest is in what you can help people understand about these allegations right. that Diddy is facing and what you believe he's facing on the inside. Mm -hmm. Now, what's most interesting to me is that you seem to see Diddy as kind of an Epstein kind of figure, uh, that Jeffrey Epstein, that a lot of people know what Diddy was about, and he, they were about the same thing, and that's why they're quiet. That's why J-Lo and Ben Affleck got divorced because of videos that he has of her that now they know about. Where is this coming from? So that is interesting because that was the first time that I heard this part uh, of the story. Uh, and it is true. They did file for divorce, whatever. I don't care about, you know, Ben and Jen getting divorced or whatever. But if that is true, that the feds saw J-Lo in, I guess, compromising ways on this video. Again, this is not just about people getting together and having sex. This is about people that were people were drugged. Uh, a lot of participants not willing, uh, sex trafficking as well. There's a list that goes on and on. And also minors were allegedly involved, which is a crime. We don't know what J-Lo may or may not have done. We don't know. But remember what we do know is that they said Diddy had cameras in every room. Again, Suge Knight is on the phone from prison from with you what do you believe about the people around diddy and what everybody knows well first of all you got to start with at the top you starting with the top Clyde davis russell simmons andrea real jimmy ivine even if you take jimmy ivine he had an allegation from him same thing, he went away. 
you take Jimmy Iovine. They told me at Universal on the Interscope, they said, you know what? We can't deal with artists that gets in trouble. And your artist gets in trouble, they talk crazy. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and that happens. Uh, that's the prison operating thing there. Uh, what was interesting there is Clive Davis's name doesn't surprise me. Uh, Russell Simmons has had allegations brought um, against him before as well a couple years ago. But from what I understand, Russell Simmons no longer lives in the U.S., so he probably knows this was about to go down at some point. Recorded. Keep going, Shook. They speak about what they, they speak about what they see. Now, I was told that I can't do business there because of that. Now, Doug Morris gave Puffy a deal for millions of dollars. It flopped. So when you look at all these things and everybody want to say Puffy, 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 don't get me wrong. Yeah, Puffy stepped in his shit and even if he wiped the shit off his shoe, it still stinks. But he's not the only one. Mm. They got all the tapes. Now, when you video. talk about the tapes, but this who, been going on what, for a long time. Who, hold on, Shug. Help us understand, because a lot of this stuff is a little inside baseball for people, right? Uh, because they don't live the life, they don't know the Let's world, they don't know the players. Your telephone number will um, be monitored and but, recorded. Uh, that's just a recording from the prison that's just saying that they record it, which obviously they do. Shug, help people understand. What tapes are you talking about? Who has them? And what kinds of things do you think they show? Well, number one, <laughs> luckily, I wasn't, I wasn't the first choice, the second choice. I wasn't the choice to be at those freaky parties. But you know what they show. They used to have a thing in the industry, right? And the sad thing about it, I don't like missing the Usher. I don't like missing the Justin Bieber. I don't like missing all these people that everybody knows what time it is. So at the same time, in, uh, they used to have a joke. They never played this joke with me. And... They used to walk in the Interscope office. They'd go back there and they'd be like, hey, we passed the test. I said, we haven't did the test. Let me tell you what the test was because I'm going to skip over this part uh, just a little bit just because um, uh, it's kind of vulgar the way it's described. So I'm going to just describe it in a more discreet way. Uh, apparently, the test that uh, he had, I guess Diddy had people do was to take an egg uh, not a cooked egg, but, you know, an uh, egg in the shell and um, put it in, insert it into a place of your body. I'm pretty sure you guys can figure that out, <laughs> what I'm talking about. And apparently if the egg shell cracked, that meant that that person was not ready yet to engage in these activities. But if the eggshell did not crack, then it meant that they were ready to engage in these activities. I'm going to let you use your imagination uh, for all of that. Going on, Hold on a second. But Shug, if you just look, that's Shug, all you got to do is I have, I have never heard of anything like that. So if I haven't heard about it, just assume a lot of people okay, well, haven't heard that before. Okay, but you think stop, it's stop, on stop, video? Stop for a second. Let's stop, let's stop for a second. Go ahead, Shug. Yeah, listen, and also... Have you ever been to any puffy parties? No. <laughs> you sure they had a long time to think about it, but if you have... <laughs> <laughs> Look at the look on Chris's face. Because <laughs> he said, have you ever been to a puffy party? Like, no. <laughs> I haven't been in those butt naked parties. Even some of the preachers been in those parties and they wasn't on their knees praying for God. See, they was praying for somebody to have come real quick or something. But I wasn't there for this poop of it. At the same time, everybody want to look around and act like something going on that wasn't right. It's the facts of life in the industry. Not for the people who don't get in. So, everybody, you got to look at it like this. You see a beautiful woman or you see a handsome man. And it was like that all their life. From elementary school to junior high school to high school, if they forced to go to college, college, right? They always knew they had something special about themselves. But you take some of the Hollywood executives or some artists, they might have been the ugly duckling for a long time before they had the teeth sticks and lipsticks and nose sticks 
all the work done. Underneath, they still the young came up with no confidence. So I think what Suge is saying here is that they found a way to like take those people who I guess were what they called the ugly ducklings, like in high school. And in a sense, it's like the industry brought those people in, they made money, they fixed them up, gave them like, you know, plastic surgery procedures to make them, you know, I guess whatever they wanted them to be. And, but inside you still feel like that. Uh, it's like, um, someone that has lost a lot of weight, but they still, when they look in the mirror, they still feel like the, the, the chubby kid at, at fat camp. What do they just call it? Fat camp. They still feel that way. It's like that. So the industry brings, I guess it has a tendency when you bring in those type of people in what you give them and what you do for them. You're like, basically in a sense, it's like you're grooming them. That's what it seems like to me. And it's like, they never had that before. They never had anybody tell them that they were beautiful. They never had anybody tell them that um, they're special or whatever. And it's it's really crazy when you think about it, but it's also kind of sad because who would they usually target for that? Young people. Young people who may not have adults in the room with them every time to tell them, you know, you are somebody and don't fall for the, those types of things. Cassie was young. Justin Bieber was young. Usher was young. You guys see a pattern here? Because they've been that way all their fucking life. So all of a sudden, if you look at puppy old pictures, don't look nothing like his new pictures. You know, shit, they, they didn't do right, everything. But, but sure, just because he has plastic surgery, all, all I'm saying is, I'm not saying that you're wrong about rich people doing stuff to their face or whatever it is, but that's different than... The allegations that are coming I mean, down I can't on talk him. About richer people. I'm talking about the difference. I'm talking about okay. Look, look at it like this. Mm. I look at real plain and simple. Ain't no, ain't no whistleblower. Facts is there. But right now, I don't care if it's Ti. I don't care if it's Rick Ross. I don't care if it's Jay. I don't care if it's Snoop. I don't care if it's Game. I don't care if it's Dre. Nobody's stepping up on the fact that you know what's going on. Nobody's defending him. You You're right. You have guys in a scope. You're right. Okay. okay. No, well, nobody is defending No, nobody. Have you guys noticed that? Have you guys noticed that Snoop, Dre, none of those guys that are any of the other guys in the music industry, have you noticed none of them are defending Diddy? None of them. That right there should tell you something. Again, like but that's why I, I was interested in hearing your perspective. Name. Hey, Shug, thank you for calling back. I think they lost him there and then he came back, but yeah. Hey, I'd like to say this too real quick. You got a woman that works for you. We're Look, jumping ahead of that part. What I was basically trying to say is this. I respect your show and respect what you're doing, but the most important thing is is the, is the um, there's got to be a solution because this has been going on in the industry for a whole bunch of years, for decades. And at the same time, you know, Nobody wants this to be true, and it shouldn't have to be true. But if we don't fix it and do something about mm. it, history will constantly repeat itself. itself. Now, Shug, yep. you said something now, early on that I want to get clarification for the audience, Shug. You said early on, you can't just look at Diddy in isolation. You said this was done to him. He learned from others, and it was done to him, and then he did to others. To me... That sounds like what I hear when people are talking about abusive situations, you know, hurt people, hurt people, that someone was sexually abused. They wind up being a perpetrator. Is that what you're suggesting about Sean Combs, that he was sexually abused and he now sexually abuses? Groom, probably groomed by Clive Davis. Yeah, I, I think that's absolutely right. I think he repeat what was done to him. And like I said, if you look at Russell Simmons, you know the truth. Andrew Rail, you know the truth. Clyde Davis, you know the truth. Jimmy Iveen, you know the truth. So there's not certain things that all of a sudden you got this. The industry is a quick business. It's been like that for a long time. Mm. And the casting couch is real, but it's for women and men. But far from all that, I think the most important thing is to I feel like they should let 
puppy tell his truth. I'm quite sure he's going to expose a lot of people. I'm sure he's going to move forward with it. But I don't think it mm-hmm. should be a situation like the Epstein thing where they found him hanging from the ceiling the dead for the truth to come out. Do you believe that... I think that, the truth needs to be... Do you believe that Diddy is in danger in prison? And do you have advice for him based on what you just said? Well, the first advice I had, I don't ever want to say he's in danger and neither should he say that. Because once he gets to the point where they feel he's going to be suicidal to himself, harmful to himself, once they put him on suicide watch, you had a right to nothing. No socks, no drawers, no T-shirt, no blanket, no sheets. You asshole naked in a cell as a crazy man. So he definitely don't want to do that. And it's, and I- so let me pause here for a second. Did everybody uh, capture what Suge Knight was saying there? He said this has been going on for decades. Notice he doesn't sound surprised by it. Like Chris Cuomo seems a little bit surprised. I think the rest of us might have been a little bit surprised. I mean, I've been hearing about this stuff for, I say the past couple of years, there were rumors about this. this. But notice that Suge Knight is kind of like... Uh, almost as if it was just a part of the industry. And if that was happening in the music industry, what's happening in the film industry? What's happening in the television industry? What's happening in, you know, a pro- professional sport? What's what's happening in all these different, you know, industries? I remember Corey Feldman back in the day. Corey Feldman wrote a book. He tried to tell people what was happening in Hollywood. He tried to tell people that there were producers and and big time people in Hollywood that were sexually abusing kids. He he tried to tell people Corey Feldman and Corey Haim were blackballed after that. Done. I bet you some people feel like they would they wish they would have listened to Corey Feldman. Other advice I would tell him, you know. Maybe he should get on the Jewish diet. Because the kosher meals is way better than the, the food somebody else is making for you. At least they're going to come hot. They're going to come sealed, and you got to be the one to open them. That's okay. very important. What about people he trying to hurt to go them? To jail or... I mean, one of the things is this. I don't care who you are. Prison and jail is a negative environment. If somebody can do something to them and get a name for themselves, they're going to actually do it. Uh, yep. They can do whatever they feel they, they got to do to prove themselves. But we also got to learn. We got to learn from our mistakes. Everything don't have to be a mistake. You got to better yourself. But we all know what we signed up for in life. So if I sign up to be a football player, I knew I'm going to get hit and I'm going to hurt some motherfuckers too. If I signed up to be in the music business and the entertainment business, if you fight for right and being a black man, there's certain things you got to look at for some challenges. If they can't take the money from you, they take you from the money by putting you in prison. That's a fact. In Puffy's situation, he should go and get his time out the way. Not no life sentence. If he can get a lesser time, he should jump on it because he had a great run. I'm in prison right now. I had a great run. So I don't go mad. I don't wake up mad. I've been here for, I've been locked up for 10 years and I ain't had a bad day yet. I don't even remember why Suge Knight is in prison. I do remember though. I do remember Vanilla Ice said that Suge Knight like uh, had him dangling out of a window or or something like that. Like Suge Knight tried to beat him up and was dangling him out a window or whatever. I've heard that story so many times in music, like music industry stories about people being dangled outside of a window. But I don't remember why he's there. I just thought about that. I'm like, why is Suge Knight in jail? But it makes me wonder, are other things going to come to light along with this uh, this trial? If it does go to trial, which I think it sounds like it's heading in that direction, are other things going to be revealed? Uh, we're talking about Diddy and Tupac and Biggie. Is there things that are going to come out about that? Because I told you guys a long time ago, I have always been suspicious about that. It just always came, seemed kind of strange to me that Diddy just happened to be present at both shootings, just happened to be around at both shootings. Uh, other people got shot, but he never got hurt. And I always questioned that. Always did. But I wonder, are other things going to come out about that situation? 
One thing I think that we all have to remember again, this doesn't mean that it's just Diddy or Clive Davis or the other people that Suge Knight mentioned, you know, in this interview. I'm pretty sure there are more people that have not been named. And some of those people may surprise you. We may never know unless Diddy decides to talk. Now, the part about J-Lo too, that's interesting. That's interesting. So I don't, I don't know, but I will say if he does decide to talk, it sounds like a lot of people are going to go down. And if a lot of people go down to the music industry, next person I'm looking at probably would be like Jay-Z because I've heard some stories about Jay-Z as well. So if those are true, he would probably go down. But if this seriously like crumbles the music industry, maybe that's what needs to happen because it sounds like from what I was hearing from Suge and all these other people, sounds like to me, the music industry got away from being about music. That's what it sounds like to me. I, 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 I don't know about you guys, but I really enjoy uh, going to uh, live venues for local, local talent. Like I like going to go see local shows and I've, I've seen like, you know, like pop star concerts and all that stuff too. But I have, a, I feel like I have more fun when I just go see a local band. Like I did that when I was in Maine recently, I saw a local band It's not as crowded. I'll have to fight anybody going to the restroom or trying to find the restroom. So there's that. Um, it's much more relaxed and I feel like it's more about the talent. Does that make sense? <laughs> 